How's my hair? <laughs> it's okay. Qualify the podcast. This is your host, Hassan. With me, I have Shaquita Morell, Nina's Chicks Waist Beads. Entrepreneur conversation today. Before we get started, let's do some housekeeping. Remember to like and subscribe and share. You can find me on all streaming platforms, including YouTube under QLAFD or Qualified Comma the Podcast. Also, check the shirt. Black His and Hers Apparel is available on BLKHISNHERS.com. 10% off promo code QLAFD10. Like I do that? Yep. It's pretty professional. Pretty professional. I'm a damn pro at this. Yes, you are. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's get this thing started. So why I wanted to talk to you. Number one, what are we, two or three photo shoots in at this point? Correct. Two. Okay. So I wanted to introduce you to this platform because you have a brand and it should be highlighted and celebrated. Person yeah. of color, woman, entrepreneur, businesswoman. We got to talk about this stuff. Okay. Um, so let's talk about your waist beats. Out of everything that you could have done, why would you create waist beads? Well, I started wearing these little beautiful things when I was around 15. I really didn't know the history of it. So, um, you know, it's time, start, you know, flew by. I, I'm still wearing them. I just decided that I wanted to kind of get into the history of them. And me being a person who loved to... Um, encourage women, uplift women, and all those things, you know, just knowing the history, um, them being something from Africa, starting with, you know, women uplifting, uh, with bonding, something that's, that's created, you know, trans, uh, passed down from mom to daughter, and then, you know, sisterhood, and just a gift of love. I decided I wanted to start created, creating these things, um, and I mean, I just started to make them for fun at first you know just oh let me just make them for myself I never even thought about selling them at first until uh one of my friends was like oh these are so nice you really think about selling them <laughs> you know so that's kind of how that happened it really I, it was intentional but not like I figured I would do it eventually eventually but uh that's kind of what started it like a passion project mm -hmm. that turned into something that you can you know like monetize exactly Exactly. So when I looked at it, and I think you've changed the format of how you create them now, but I think that it's been a journey. Now, I'm saying this on behalf of, of what I've experienced looking at the product mm -hmm. because of how many times I've had to wrap a body now <laughs> with all these waist beads. Exactly. Um, and I can see where, where they have you've changed the formatting of how they are bound and, and connected. But I really like I really like the journey that you've taken with it because now seeing you at vendors and pop-up shops and mm -hmm. stuff like that, you're selling this to people. You're educating them as you go. Mm -hmm. They don't really understand culturally the significance. They think it's cute. They think it's sexy. They mm -hmm. think it's something. But but you're really giving them something more um, to take away because it is a cultural identification um, as you decide to to wear that. But you also do uh, waist beads and what do we call it? Egyptian sandals? Uh, Egyptian bracelets. Egyptian yeah. bracelets. Mm -hmm. So how do you choose what what color patterns to create with these it's not even really a choice well it's you know sometimes i just think about it and i'm, I'm trying to do the colors that you know different colors mean different things so i try to do that but a lot of times it's just mood it's like oh well what do i feel like creating today this color is going to go well with this and yeah i kind of think about it for a bit and put my colors together, think, you know, the amount of times sometimes that I'm undoing something just because I didn't like one little thing. It's mm -hmm. crazy, but um, that's just um, because I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> <Fair> <laughs> but um, no, I just, I, I choose whatever colors I, I kind of think look good and different. Yeah, I try to be a little bit different. I think we all do. So I don't want you to have something that everybody else has. It's just going to be something that's unique to me. And mostly I get that kind of response every time people see the amount that I've made. And then, you know, they're like, wow, these are so different, you know. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the market is there. I mean, we, we've seen a lot of people make them. And I've seen a lot of different stuff. Ever since I started actually working on your projects, I've seen a lot of different waist beads now. And I think that's Big Brother listening to me and showing me stuff on my phone that I normally won't search for. Correct. <laughs> but then I've seen it in, in like physical form too. Correct. It's like, oh, but see, now I'm just kind of looking for it. Yeah. And 
and I'm looking at stones and shells and, and the integration of, of certain aspects into the style of the waist bead. And I don't want to be studying this. Like, I'm just like, <laughs> when you call me and say, hey, I need you to, to direct the shoot again, I'm like, now I get engaged. Right. But now I'm looking at waist beads in the grocery store because somebody's wearing it. <laughs> exactly. Thanks. That's your fault. Thank it you. Is. I accept it. I, yeah, accept I, it. I appreciate that. <laughs> Outside of that, your... Um, this this being a cultural item, though, you have had an affinity for the islands. Mm-hmm. Um, not one in particular or like like what got you into this being an island? Because it is kind of Caribbean, too. Like mm-hmm. it's definitely something that you can wear on the beach. Mm-hmm. Still looks good. Mm-hmm. I'm going to integrate photos into this because I have too many of them now. So right. like you can actually <laughs> see how this looks for style purposes on the models that we have, including you, because you are a model. Thanks. We're going to get to that later. Cool. Um, but the... Like, where does the island vibe come into play when it comes down to waist beads? So I kind of married into this, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's definitely, um, it's family now. So um, it's it's definitely, it's it, you kind of get engulfed into the culture. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's it's definitely, um, you know, a husband, he's from Grenada. Um, and, and, it, and if you've ever known anybody from the islands, they're very... Uh, proud of their culture so what we've done is um we've just integrated it into what we do um my daughter is very she's into the business as well this is pretty much my her business she mostly does marketing now (laughs) but um you know, so we decided that, wait, listen, you know, people are, they love their flags. They, they're they proud of their flags. So let's kind of do some um, flag beads. Let's do some waist beads that have the flag incorporated into it. So, um, and just because we're always traveling to the islands, I've pretty much um, every year I'm trying to add a different island to where I'm traveling. And um, it's just the culture, the culture of the music, the culture of the food. So it's so rich that, I mean, it's just... You, you get engulfed in it. You get, um, once, you, once you're in it, you're pretty much in it, your family. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, that's pretty much how that started. And everywhere I go, it's just been about the waist beat. So, you know, I kind of take up everywhere too. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Sure. I like it because you can advocate cultural diversity and, and you're able to actually see a lot of that in terms of the choices that you have in your products, you know, like a lot of the things that w- when I was in the studio and I was looking through these and I have Trent, shout out to Trent, Trent Atkins, Grexus yeah. Photography. Yeah. Uh, you can also find him at www.grexusphoto.com. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but there, um, the work that he was doing, like when we're looking over his shoulder and seeing like, these really look good in the light. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, you know, this is kind of what a photographer is supposed to do. Like, mm-hmm. he's supposed to highlight the product and make it look, you know, nice and classy. But but looking at them on the physical models, it, well, I get how this could be done outside of the beach, casually. Mm-hmm. Like, it made a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. I would love to think that in this, in this story of you creating these out of, you know, fun, and it turns into the business, that it's, it's blowing into this uncontrollable amount. But for your business, though... Where do they find the waste beads, social media purposes, as well as like websites? Where can they find them? Okay, so my website it's uh, www.ninashiqs3 dot com, um, and then the social medias are all going to be Nina's Chicks uh, N I N A S C H I Q S, and that's going to be on uh, Facebook, Instagram, um, and and basically that's. Pretty much where they find it. Uh, a lot of times, you a lot of people like to go to Instagram to see kind of the ideas, the creations, and then they'll go and order from the website. So that's pretty much where we are. Can they find you in to do custom work? Yeah, a lot of people do ask for custom work. So I usually ask for a deposit with those because you know people can be fickle at times. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, a lot of times, I mean, I have so many creations that people usually are like, oh, they like what I they see. But if, they, if there's somebody who just really wants something that's for them and them only, then yeah, I definitely do custom as well. What is on average the price for um, a standard waist bead as you as you can find on the website? Uh, so they, I, I usually try to give a range anywhere from $50 to like high end $80. Um, and that's just basically because, I mean, if you're going to get to the higher end, that's because it's going to include crystals. We do a lot of 
energy work um, into our crystals, meaning that we're saging, we are cleansing, we are putting them into the uh, sound healing bowls. And so, um, you know, a lot of people, just a lot of intricate work goes into some of those designs. So they're a little bit more highly priced. But if you're just trying to get like a simple solid, that's going to be like $15. 15 dollars mm-hmm. 15 So 15 to 80 Yeah. But it depends on the stone. Correct. It depends on the stone. Mm-hmm. So, Okay. Oh, that's really cool. Now, listen, this is nothing that I would wear. Like, I'm just not going to wear any waist beads. Um, nor am I going to wear it. Don't worry. Yeah, <laughs> but, but if you are into that, you can give them too. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Just, you know, I, I won't be modeling them. They find me to be a poster boy for a certain amount of stuff. This is where I stop. <laughs> like, where this, is, this is the line <laughs> for me. Oh, like, man. the line might be back here somewhere, but this one is also there too. I was going to get you in some. <laughs> no, I do like this necklace, though. You. This is this is good for progress though, just based on you know just seeing you grow, seeing you grow and develop. And now, how many how many shows or like pop ups do you think you do um, on average? Like, is it seasonal or you just kind of go with the flow or what? Uh, usually when it's warmer because I'm I'm usually outside. <laughs> yes. uh, I try to do like about maybe maybe about five or six pop ups a month mm-hmm. um, when it's warm. Um, but that's pretty much where it goes. And I, I do a lot of fashion shows because I am a model. Uh, so I try to put them in fashion shows, try to get the products on models who are walking the runway. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much, I try to do pop-ups. I, I like them. At first I didn't think that I would, but here's the thing about doing the pop-ups. So what I do love is being in front of people, tying, you know, giving a woman, women the tying experience. Um, that means we're setting intentions. Um, they're coming to us, uh, the amount of women that come to me and just cry. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, a, it's, an, it's an experience. So we talk about things that are going on, what they would like to see, what their intentions are, and then they get the tying experience. We kind of set intentions with them, you know, and just seeing a woman, confidence grow within those moments Mm -hmm. is like the best experience ever so i mean i I definitely wouldn't give that up for anything that's cool um you're selling a product that for sure has a good face-to-face um personable customer experience there's a lot of things that you can just get online but yours in particular is supposed to be a part of an experience that goes along with it you pick you select you get tied and then that in itself becomes a part of you correct to move forward because otherwise you would just have like a silver clasp and you just say, hey, you know, I, this fits size 20 inch to 38 inch. Good luck. You know what I mean? All right. So I like I like it for product. I'm a marketing kid. I think about marketing and business branding all the time. Yeah. It's cute until it ain't. And then you're just like, <laughs> shut up. I'm trying to eat cereal. But but it's that's when I think about it, though, and every time that we have to execute something in terms of implementing your brand. Thanks for using my business, by the way. Uh, But whenever we think about how to implement that, this is a part of the game planning that we go through, Mm -hmm. like especially with Trent and I. It is that level of meticulous, which you've seen, because we just nerd out when we're, you know, working on what we work on. Correct. So your your business, as mentioned, is found on the website, your website, as well as you can go on Instagram and look at the rest of the products. Additionally, we'll just call this segment one because what we're about to get into is your modeling, mm-hmm. as well as I need you to answer a really important question for me. But let's take a break for right now, and we'll come back to that in two minutes. I'm curious if you can answer a question for me. Mm-hmm. Is there a difference, in your opinion, between a model and a muse? Um, absolutely. Um, a muse is to inspire. So a lot of times, you know, a muse inspires the art. Models just kind of go and do their job. Um, So, you know, I prefer to be called a muse because I think I inspire art. Um, Mm. You know, a lot of photographers are like, hey, I was inspired by this. And so, you know, I looked at you and I thought about this or, you know, something inspired me. And um, that's pretty much the the lines of where I go with the the modeling. So I'd rather be a muse. (laughs) So I had the reason why I'm having this conversation is actually I was talking to about this the other day Mm -hmm. and it wasn't about you um but it was about a young lady that we actually worked with and she was having a conversation i just happened to be listening in earshot and she's like you know a lot of models like this that and the other and she's let me be specific because that sounds real vague she says a lot of models like to be um taken out afterwards as a thank you Mm -hmm. 
And in order for, you know, the photographer to let them know, hey, you know, I appreciate what you've done. Maybe go out for drinks or maybe go to dinner afterwards. And in my head, because I couldn't show this, I had a poker face. I'm cringing because I'm like, no, they don't. So (laughs) I was like, "Uh, uh," I'm doing like, no, this is like, really? And I'm like, no. Um, So we get in the car and I have a phone and he's like, she's really cool. Really want to work with her again. I said, yeah, cool. I said, the thing about this, though, is that what you have to keep in mind is that she is a muse. Mm -hmm. First, and always has been. Muses, in my opinion, do not mind everything she just mentioned. Mm -hmm. She is like that. She particularly enjoys the aftermath of of the engagement Mm -hmm. because she wants to be appreciated for being inspiring. And and that makes 100% sense. But that rarely involves contract, release forms, um, wardrobe as gifts, get in, get out, going on about your business. Mm -hmm. Um, you can have a connection. We've worked with models. You have a connection where you would like to use them specifically, but that is still a job. Mm-hmm. It's not as though that you're going to you know, have a cookout at the home and say, hey, why don't you guys come on over and drink all, all that you can. Right. It's not that. <laughs> but I wanted to know if you as both would be able to express the difference between the two because I think it's important for people in the business to understand. Muses inspire, as you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Muses work with you long term. I'd also shed color onto that. Mm -hmm. It's like a long term relationship, so to speak, because there is a level of connection that's a little different than saying I need someone who has this look in order to provide this feeling for this shot. Mm -hmm. It's blank, blank, blank Mm -hmm. from the director standpoint. I can go find that person online. I can make that bid. We can cut that check, cash out, do whatever we need to do. That ain't a muse relationship. Correct. It's different. Muse is is making someone want to do something, right? right? It it actually works in reverse. But I like it. Do you, so you said you like being a muse more. I do. I do. With the, you're coast to coast now, right? Like with your modeling. Mhm. Yeah. What's your favorite city to be in? Um I don't, I don't want to sound cliché, but I think I like to be in Miami. <laughs> um the crazy thing is oh, I I do more stuff Outside of the states, mm. so mm. yeah, but I mean, inside of the states, yeah, Miami is is super cool. Um, so in Houston, though, I really like to be in Austin. Austin is so artsy. Um, you know, I think the feel in Austin right now is just it's it's a vibe. So <laughs> Austin, well, I mean, we're biased now. I got my baby up there, uh, Trent's up there. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I'm going up there in like two weeks. Like it's nice. just like I'm always there. I can't live there. I can't live there. I, don't know. I, I would only be able to stay for a couple because it's just it's it's a small town with big city problems. Correct. And it's becoming more big city esque. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that ain't the Austin that I grew up knowing yeah. and loving. Correct. But the vibe is free. It's mm-hmm. more, lo- much more liberal. Mm-hmm. It's the Portland of Texas. Yeah. Yeah, it's the best way <laughs> that I can makes say sense. it. Because <laughs> if you go to Portland, Oregon, you're like, am I in Austin? <laughs> Except it smells more like wine because the wine country's out there. But right. we have our own wine trail out here. We do. It's the port. It's the Portland. Of Te- I said it. It's the Portland of Texas. I, I, I can get that. So okay. So Miami, Texas. Yeah. Out of the photographers that you work with here, and and Trent's not in Houston, but out of the photographers that you work with in Houston, who are some of your favorite that you work with? Um. So, uh, you. I think we have a, a mutual person that we know. I like Troy. Troy, Troy Thomas is Troy's really. A man. Yeah, he's so good. He's. Yeah. You know, and and he's about promoting people, so he mm. tries to get models in magazines. I think I think Troy is super cool. Um, I have a good one, Lamont Johnson. Um, he is really good, mm. really qualified. Um, he's been in the business over twenty years. Mm. Um, had a dad who's a photographer, so it's it's kind of bloodline type stuff. And he is passionate about helping models. Um, just progress so uh it's it's been a pleasure actually knowing him and just working with him we kind of do crazy concepts he's really really one of those photographers that you know when it comes to musing um definitely he's he'll call me like oh i thought about this i thought about you and this idea and this concept and can we do this and i'm like heck yeah you know and i'm yeah. the crazier the better for me so mm-hmm. yeah no I, I like them too i think the best i've worked with a lot of houston photographers but i think those two are the best in houston yeah I agree. I've seen Lamont's pictures of you. Mm-hmm. I haven't really studied his page. Mm-hmm. I so happen to have the, uh, the the honor of being a part of Troy's journey to mm-hmm. a degree. I don't take a lot of credit for that. I'm just saying that he knows that he can always call me and he's yeah. always asked me questions. I will always give him an answer. That's my brother. Yeah. Um, I have zero issue in helping out any photographer, but my stance in photography was that of an academic standpoint. And then it grew into, a, you know, a work for yourself standpoint. 
but I was handling the industry differently than they are. Yeah. And I was lucky enough to understand the difference between models and muses. I've booked models. I've had six muses at least mm -hmm. over, over the course period of my timeline of being an artist. Mm -hmm. I don't think that I consider myself a photographer more than an artist. I did, a, I did a different realm of creativity. Mm -hmm. um, and the work that I did, I was expecting for it to be published in areas that most people wouldn't have even shot for, definitely not people of color. Mm -hmm. um, but even in my reputation, I was probably one of the only, I think I might have been the only uh, photographer that was dealing with live reptiles. Um, oh, wow. Like before I shut it down. I'm not surprised. <laughs> it was, it was, I was going dark. Like <laughs> it, was, it was becoming strange. You know what I mean? Like I would yeah. be mixing... Um, I'd be mixing like Michael Dawkins and, and David Yerman jewelry, like with Pave diamonds all in it. But I'd have a tarantula crawling across your chest. Uh, like yeah. I'm on, I'm on a different level. I'm operating at a different frequency. <laughs> but a muse wouldn't mind, right. you know. She's like, but they would call and hey, what are we doing this time? Because I would call them, they would call me because they knew I was always doing something. Mm -hmm. I can't nice. stop. Um, but it became. My style was something different. I've seen Troy's work enough now, much like Trent's. I've seen Troy's work right now so much that I can tell who shot it. Mm -hmm. Like I can look at it and say, that's his. Yeah. Look at Trent and say, that's your style. Because Trent works with another photographer. You'll meet him later. But he works with another one. And their styles are very similar. Mm -hmm. But their angles are different. Got it. And so now you're just studying. No one had what I shot. No oh. one shot the way I shot. I was actually going high grain film, even in digital. Got it. So... I believe, as an artist, you should be providing a different um, end product than what would a photographer standard do. Okay. Um, but, you know, it's, it's artsy, nerdy talk. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's not necessarily always the case that an individual would do that because most of the time a photographer is trying to be within the industry to keep getting revenue, to keep getting, you know, requested and demanded. I didn't care about none of that. <laughs> it's like, are we going to use the hundred pound snake today or not? Like it was, it was, it was that. Hey, who can we call to get the alligators? And we did, and it became a thing. And like, I had a crocodile like stalking people in the in the studio. Wow. Fun days, fun days. Like good um, times. Good times. Nobody died. It was cool. <laughs> um, nobody needed a tetanus shot after that. Like, <laughs> thank God. It it was um, it was very unique. So. Um, but yeah, shout out to Lamont, shout out to Troy, for yeah. sure. Um, <laughs> Troy, if you're listening, uh, we'll make sure you get a clip of this. But absolutely, it was, it's been a pleasure watching him grow and seeing what he does now. Real solid stuff, real yeah. solid stuff. When it comes down to you as a, as a brand yourself, model, muse, businesswoman with the way speeds, what else do you do? Um, so, let's see. Uh, I dance <laughs> I sing um yeah I've I've done the acting thing a little bit here and there uh, I, I maybe it's one of my lesser passions uh grew up singing so that was just a thing if you have a grandfather who's a blues player you kind of just mm -hmm. grow up in the business so yeah. grew up into that um dancing is definitely a, a big thing you know Caribbean stuff um uh, doing a lot of carnival stuff so but those are the things that I do <laughs> Yeah, I think in terms of it and being an encompassing artist yeah. suitcase, like you, you, you have all of those facets in there. I didn't know that until way later, you know, in terms of like dancing and singing, it was like news. But but it's <laughs> the idea of it all isn't surprising. Correct. It's just the fact that, okay, great. This is not the name droppy show. If there's anything that you would like in terms of, you know, independent music that you want uh, for us to hear, I could definitely stream it. I can definitely make sure that it's out there. You just let me know however you want your your brand to be flexed onto my platform. It's absolutely fine. Got it. I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah. You have anything else you want to let the people know? Um, just continue to watch out for the brand. Uh, the way speeds are definitely um, just you'll you'll see us here and there. You'll see us on runways. Just continue to watch out. Just continue to check out the, the Instagram. Check out the the um the website. I mean, we're on TikTok too. I forgot to mention that. Oh, so TikTok. just watch out for the for the TikToks, and we'll do a little bit more fun stuff. You know. <laughs> so uh, the website again is www chiqs 3com and uh, you can find us at you know on Facebook and Instagram and TikTok at Ninas Chicks N I N A S C H I Q S. Very cool. You already know where to find me. 
You can find me on all streaming platforms. Just search under QLAFD or Qualified Comma, the podcast. There are many out there, but nothing like this. Also, check out BlackHisAndHers.com, B-L-K-H-I-S-N-H-E-R-S.com. You can find them also on Instagram under the same name, 10% off with QLAFD10. Until next time, y'all take care and be well to each other. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.